reverse gear under a bridge. Welcome BTG Moto viewers. Uh, don't worry, it's not turned into BTG Ford Transit van. It is still a motorcycle channel, but I'm in my very handy Ford Transit and I'm on my way to buy a motorbike. So I'm super excited. I'm always happy when I'm buying a bike. Some people have cocaine, some people have both. I have buying motorbikes, love buying motorbikes. So what am I buying? Where am I buying it from? Why am I buying it? These are all questions I'm gonna answer in this video. So if you're enjoying this channel, please consider liking and subscribing. Man, I'm loving making this channel. I'm telling you that for nothing. What am I buying? I'm buying the ubiquitous best sports tourer ever. And I'm super excited to see it. I, I, I hope it's everything that I want it to be. It looks so clean. It comes with the original exhaust. It comes with all the original parts. It has got uh, a high level race exhaust on it at the moment but the rest of the bike looks totally standard. And I hope, I hope it is. Man, I can't talk about this bike anymore without seeing it. I, I have to see it. So maybe when we get there, the current owner will allow me to film, maybe not. Let's see what happens next. I think I see a, a Honda. And here it is, fresh, not that fresh. It's actually 24 years old, can you believe that? This is a 24 year old bike. If this bike was a human, it would have finished university by now. Oh, I feel old. I remember when I was a teenager, I was 19 years old watching this exact bike in this exact color scheme, an RC46 in silver and red, be the Marshall's bike at the Isle of Man TT for the 50th anniversary celebrations of Honda. That is the RC46. It is the, in my opinion, the peak generation of VFR because you get the single-sided swing arm, you get the gear-driven cams, you don't get the VTEC, which I don't want, and you get the fuel injection. You don't have to keep cleaning your carbs out and having your carbs serviced. So all in all, peak bike in its peak 50th anniversary edition, limited edition colors and low kilometers, 29,000 kilometers, about 20,000 miles in any other bike that would be considered high kilometers but trust me my brother's got a 160,000 kilometer vfr that still rides pretty good so for a vfr 30,000 kilometers is not much and this is a 3,000 euro motorcycle 3,000 euros full service history everything everything you could want apart from a couple of scrapes i got a little bit of a scratch down the fairing it's obviously been laid over very gently in the garage at some point. It didn't even really do much damage physically to the bike, but it did get some scrapes which have been filled in very inexpertly with a paint pen later. The other great thing about this bike is it is largely unmodified. We've got a little race exhaust, a cheeky little race exhaust, which kind of shows off that single sided swing arm. And apart from that, it's pretty stock. I just want to say, even though the 98 VFR is my favorite VFR is not without fault. One of the little things that I don't like about the 98 model is it gets the combined braking system, which is actually a manual combined braking system. It is mechanical. As the calipers get shunted towards the forks, they actually shunt another master cylinder, which drives the rear caliper and the rear, rear caliper will shunt and move fluid into the fronts. So it is a truly combined braking system and it's absolutely fine at road speeds, but it's a little bit hectic on racetracks. I guess I'll find out over summer how bad it is on a racetrack. You can also, of course, put CBR 600 cartridge forks in the front and then just use the front brakes off CBR. So there's loads of different things you can do. A little bit more about this bike. In Germany, actually this bike got a catalyzer. It's eight horsepower down on standard. The catalyzer lives in that nasty mild steel manifold. Now, I say nasty mild steel. It is, of course, a mid-90s Honda, and mid-90s Hondas are just built different. And I do really mean built different. It's hard to believe that those pipes are 24 years old and have seen all weather conditions. That's pretty crazy. I've got the original grab handles, so I can take this cover off and I can put the grab handles on so my boy can come with me. It does benefit from a low, low mileage of 29,000. And look at this, this is, 
There's a couple of things I don't like. I don't like the white clock face on the rev counter, but I do like this. We've got an air temperature gauge and we can switch between air temperature and water temperature digitally. Very cool. Hydraulic clutch, nice. I've already set the levers for my angles of dangle on my arms, but unfortunately I can't get the front brake lever any more down than that. And also if you look along this brake lever, yeah, if you look along this brake lever, it looks to me like it's had a little bend and maybe a little bend back again. That's actually really dangerous. You can't do that with aluminium levers. Um, they're prone to snap. So mental note, if it snaps, it'll probably snap here. Um, so don't brake too hard with this because it might go. I'll get that replaced. The rest of the bike is in absolutely stunning condition, as you can see. Stunning, really good condition. So is this the best sports tourer? Is this gonna be the perfect daily rider for me? Is it gonna be able to lap the Nürburgring as well as lap Europe? Just to be clear, I do think this is the best sports tourer I can buy for 3,000 euros. And I've been looking for a cheap bike now for months and months and months, looking for something with no dirt ability whatsoever, something that can do a lap of the racetrack on a Wednesday night, and also can lead one of my tours effortlessly, reliably, and with a big healthy dose of fun. And I think this RC46 could be the one. If it's not, I'll sell it, flip it, I'll be out of it in a week. This is a great bike in great condition. I I'm sure I can sell it for what I bought it for, but I don't think I'm gonna be selling it. And do you know why? Because I just rode it here already. And boy, come with me. I have to show you this bike when it's moving. There's so much to talk about with this bike. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you to some of my favorite little twiddly roads. And they're just a few minutes away really, but they're so good. It is a Saturday, so we might not be alone on them. Just roll it on in top load, easy overtake. It's got a beautifully talking motor. There's so much going on with this RC46. Today I'm going to try and make the case that I have in fact bought the best sports tourer for 3,000 euros. My basic requirement is I've got a good ADV bike and I've got a race bike but I don't have a sporty street bike that I can ride to work and back in comfort, take on one of my BTG Moto tours in comfort, and do the occasional cheeky track session in the evenings. Because, you know, I live and work at the Nürburgring. The opportunity to ride the Grand Prix circuit in the Nordschleife presents itself pretty regularly. Let's talk very quickly about other bikes I considered before I uh, settled on an RC46. I did seriously consider an Aprilia RST1000 Futura. Not because they're popular, but because they're kind of like weird and funky and they have beautiful, beautiful, beautiful styling that has aged so well. Uh, the only thing that put me off was usual Aprilia things, especially though for an abandoned model. By abandoned, I mean that Rotax V-Twin that died off a long time ago. So when you're looking for things like coils, they get expensive. And Futuras eat coils. There's something about the temperature behind those big fairings. Um, and they have two coils per cylinder. So you've got four coils on a two-cylinder engine because it's a twin spark motor. And yeah, long story short, I didn't jump at it. If it was a bit closer, I would have probably gone to look at it and that could have very well been my sports tourer for this season. My budget sports tourer. My other budget sports tourer motorcycle could have easily been a Ducati ST3 or an ST4 or an ST2. Uh, the ST2 being the two valve head, the ST3 being the three valve head, and the ST4 being the liquid cooled, awesome, awesome Ducati 996 motor in a sports tourer. Um, Again, things that put me off, servicing costs, likelihood of needing servicing being much higher than something like the RC46. And uh, just availability. There's a geezer down there, by the way. I don't mean like a geezer, like, you know, or a governor, geezer. I mean like a, a, a water geezer, you know, a geyser. Oh, we're heading up to Zalm. Lovely little village, Zalm. And just like my village and Zaba's back, the guys in South have to put up with horrendous motorcycle noises all summer long. 
because uh, it's it's the start of one of the best roads in the Eiffel. It's not to everybody's taste, this road, I have to say. I do have friends that think the Zalm Road is rubbish, uh, but most of my friends agree that the Zalm Road is epic. It's really, it's a super moto road. It's a great road on the GS1250. It's a great road on the Touareg, to be honest. Even though I wouldn't class the Touareg as a sports bike, it's, uh, it's very handy, the little 660 on the back roads. Okay, so, where am I in this story? We decided to get a VFR, okay? So then you've got quite a few choices. But really, for me, it was going to be between the RC36 and the RC46 first generation. The second generation of the RC46 went to change-driven cams with VTEC, and I never got on with that VTEC motor. So, RC36s, still on carburetors, but there's still a lot of great bikes out there kept in fine fettle. I was tempted. There was a really nice blue one close to me. The price was right, full luggage and everything. But I just had this nasty little feeling. And with the carburetors, you're just asking for trouble. So you could have one emulsion tubes, one needles, block jets. These things all seem to happen to me more when I have carb bikes than when I have fuel injected bikes. So. With that reasoning in place, I opted for the RC46, which many people would agree is the high point of the VFR family. Why? Well, you've got the gear-driven cams, you've not got P-Tech, you've got fuel injection, you've got the single-sided swing arm, of course, you've got this amazing engine and frame combination, which really, really, really comes from the RC45 except this is a slightly different version of the motor it's a bit bigger it's a 180 degree crank did i say 180 degree crank there it's a 180 degree crank it sounds epic and you've got this amazing super narrow aluminium beam frame and this aluminium beam chassis is just for a honda fanboy like me uh, I think it's epic. I mean, it's NSR250, it's RVF400, it's RC30, it's RC45, except it's on my sports tourer. And it's got a lumpy, talky, relaxed, reliable 800cc V4 in the middle of it. This bike is only two cylinders wide. This bike is the same width as a 400 Twin, yet it's comfortable, really comfortable. Back in the day, 20 years ago, when I was a journalist, I was guilty of many cliches. And one of the, one of the most often spoken cliches about VFRs is it's like getting back in your favourite chair. Don't matter how you sit in it, you just sit in it and you go, oh, that's nice, that's cool, mate. You can sit in this all day. And that is this VFR. I think it's like 10 years since I rode a VFR 800. And then last week I've ridden three. And every time I got on one, it just felt like I was back home again. It's not a perfect bike. But I challenge you to find a better bike than this for 3,000 euros. Combined braking works absolutely fine on the road. For 99% of the customers, it's going to be absolutely fine. You barely notice it until you brake really hard into a corner. And to be honest, most of my road riding, I won't say skills, that's, that's way too complimentary. Most of my road riding methods involve not braking too hard into corners. I trail brake a lot on the road, but very gently. Like this, look, braking, braking, back on the gas. That's another pet hate of mine, is people say you've got to accelerate through the corner. No, no you don't. You can brake into corners on motorbikes. If you're not confident braking into corners, that's how you set yourself up for a nasty crash. But I'm digressing. Find me a better bike than this for three grand. I don't think you can. 
this one in particular, I have to say, was worth the three hour drive into the hinterlands to pick it up. Lovely guy who owned it last. He's looked after it. It's got full Honda service history. And it's just, it's really pretty. I mean, look at it. It's so beautiful. Listen to the motor. He's put a high level Bose race can on it. By the way, what do you think of this road? I told you it was a good road, didn't I? This is like the tail of the dragon. But, you know, 20 minutes from the Nürburgring. I tell a lie, it's more like 35 minutes from the Nürburgring here. The great thing is, you can do a little lap, which I think we'll do this morning. Talking of breaking into corners, um, the suspension on the VFR is good, and in its day it was really good, but it's never been absolutely fantastic, it's just been really, really good. And, you know, 24 years have passed since this came out, 24 years have passed since I was a cub reporter riding one of these for the first time. And I know a lot more about suspension now, and I know how good suspension can be, so there is a little voice inside of me saying, hey Dale, do you think we should do something with this? Do you think we should put some like modern suspension on a VFR 800? And you know what? I think we should. I mean, this is feeling to me like a great bike that you can just get on, go out for a little ride in the morning, clear your head and have a great day or you could get on it at seven o'clock in the morning and ride it a thousand kilometers i'm not joking this is this is that kind of like rare bike where it doesn't matter if you're riding it for 10 minutes or 10 hours it's gonna put a smile on your face some bikes are great for the 10 hour stuff but they're a bit shit for the 10 minute stuff this is the slightly more rubbish leg of the three sides. I'm doing a lap of Zalm here. And there's three legs to this lap. And this is actually the worst leg. But as you can see, it's still gorgeous. knee slider scrape today we're just having a nice ride looking forward to spring now spring is just around the corner oh it's beautiful I want to mention a couple of other bikes that have been on my radar while I've been looking at this because I do like brand new bikes as well and I bought a few brand new bikes in my life uh, more re most recently the Aprilia Twari 660 but I have bought a few Kawasaki's a couple of Suzuki's brand new as well uh, my very first brand new motorcycle straight from the dealership was a Suzuki SV650 when they were new there you go, that carbon dates me. And bikes that I think are very similar to this, but not the same, that are brand new, you've got to be looking at these kind of 100 horsepower sports tourer, everyday kind of sports bikes. So I'm thinking CBR 650, I'm thinking Kawasaki Ninja 650, um, and I'm thinking Daytona 660 when it comes. Now, I have sat on the Daytona 660, and I... I went through a period recently of really, really wanting to buy a brand new Daytona 660, especially because there's really good finance rates on it, and you've got this thing in Germany that they call Trident, and it's like a PCT package. So you just pay a deposit, you pay a monthly, and then at the end you give the bike back. Pretty easy. 
and it was quite reasonable. And I've still not, to be honest, I've still not eliminated it because maybe I should have a Daytona 660 just for my channel because I think we can talk about this now. I'm in month three of being a semi-professional YouTuber and um, yeah, I'm like, maybe I should be investing in my company by buying a new bike. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Except it has this, listen. Oh, 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 oh. I won't do it again. I'm going to slow down just to do it again. Mate, you find me a CBR 650R that sounds like that. And then, then we'll talk, okay? I want to stop at this view because this view is epic. Check this out. Oh yeah, boy. Welcome to the Eiffel. Woohoo! Yeah. Oh. Did I do the right thing? I bought a 1999 Honda, but look at it, look at it, 21 litre tank, 820 millimetre seat height, very easy to get on, very accessible, and great, great, superb real world performance, and I have no doubt that it's going to do a nice lap in the Nürburgring, might want to work on that suspension before we start hitting these, uh, these goals. Oh boy. Today I've done just over 100 kilometers on the VFR. Am I happy with it? Pfft. Yeah, I really am. Obviously there's some compromises to choosing a 3,000 euro motorcycle as opposed to a 13,000 euro motorcycle. Obviously I don't have any warranty. Obviously no ABS, no traction control. And I understand for many people that's a complete deal breaker. And I get that. For the lack of warranty, I would say there is a small advantage to a 24 year old bike. And that is that every part of the servicing process, every part of the bike that might fail, that is a weak spot is so well known that staying on top of the servicing for uh, an older bike like this is actually a lot easier than a newer bike. So there are some advantages. This bike will be seeing a lot more action over the summer. I'm going to do a Romanian tour in 2025. I'm actually going to call that the Transylvanian Adventure and we're going to go do the Transfigarison Pass. We're going to go do the Transalpina and I'm going to wreck it on the VFR. So that's going to be a whole video. That's in July. Obviously the VFR is going to do the Grand Prix circuit. The VFR is going to do the Nordschleifer and they've got some other stuff planned as well. So keep your eyes on this channel. If you're interested in the VFR 800, there will be a few more videos about this over the course of summer. And obviously, if you're enjoying the channel, please like and subscribe. Yeah, I'm just gonna slow down because I really want to see here. And I want to check out what this sounds like. First gear, under a bridge.